I'm Adil Kumar. In this video, I'll discuss how to collect, organize, and interpret data. Now, this video is especially for a student who came up with a very interesting question, and that was why. So, important thing is, why do we do this? Now, she is really lost with the numbers, scatter plots, interpreting them, and now wants to know why all this. <laughs> Uh, that's a very interesting situation and so I thought I'll give a twist to it and then we'll cover a part of it in this particular video, right? So first thing Rhea, which we want to do while we do interpreting data is to think about an experiment, right? So first we have some experiment in mind. If we have to be originating data, right? if we have original source of data right so to create data you may conduct an experiment that means you create original source of data right that is one thing or you can uh, pick data from others right for example you can do it from um, anywhere right so let's say from books or from internet okay Anyway, right? So there is a lot of data available. But the fun is to, as you say, to really see where it could be applied. So let's take uh, an experiment. Let us say we are in the kitchen where we have a faucet, right? So we have a faucet uh, from which we can get some water. And we have different kinds of utensils. So let me make some utensils here. So we may have a glass, right? So we may have a glass, which could be cylindrical, for example, like this. Okay, we could have a glass like this. Or we could have uh, a glass which is, uh, which is, or we could have a mug, a slightly bigger one, right? So let's say like this. Okay, that would be interesting. Okay, we could have a mug like this. Okay, with a handle. <coughs> okay. Or uh, we could have another kind of uh, wine glass, for example. Uh, let's say, let's say like this, uh, kind of like this cone, conical shaped. Okay, martini, right? Okay, we could have a wine glass like this. Uh, the idea is, if we are pouring water in each, and we want to know when will the utensil get filled, right? So, so we want to know when. will the utensil get filled let's select this right so we think about an experiment where we have a constant rate here so water flows at constant let's say rate or let's say speed right simple terms and we want to know when will they fill up right so so slowly they will start when they are empty, right? Nothing is there, and slowly the water will will fill it, right? Now, so and we want to know when will it fill up. But what we do here is that we stop just right there before it gets filled, right? Something happens, and you just stop here, and you're not able to complete the experiment, but you want to know the results, right? So, so let us say we want to know when will the utensil get filled. Uh, and let us say assume assume uh, you stop somewhere in between right. reason could be any right reason could be any let it be uh, your favorite show on TV okay fine so reason could be any <clears throat> that is the kind of experiment which we are doing do you think uh, interpreting data will be of use? Yes, maybe. After all, you spent so much of time in collecting these utensils, filling it up, making table, collecting data. Somehow, you couldn't figure out how much time will it take to really top it up. Right. So that could be an interesting thing. So we'd like to explore how to do this. So obviously, when you look at this experiment, you will think about creating a table, right? And in the table, two things are important for you. That is, as the time go by, so time t, and let us say you are measuring time in seconds. T 
time t and then you could measure height of water right so you could measure height of water what time so we'll say height of water so initially to start with time was zero and height of water was also zero correct and then you measured this after every 10 seconds let's say so when time went by after every 10 seconds you measured the height and to keep things simple what I will do is we found that in the first case it increased by let's say height is in centimeters okay so it increased by 5 centimeters so it becomes 5 centimeters and then 5 more in next 10 seconds and 15 and so on and let us say after 30 seconds you stop the experiment and you want to find the time it will take to top off knowing fully well that this glass is about let let's give it a value that this glass is about about uh, 27 centimeters so I'm not taking a value which is easy to calculate I'm taking a value which could be difficult right okay so 27 centimeters now if the height of the glass is 27 centimeters that is to say how much time does it take to fill this glass when I mean how much when it is like topped off that means the height becomes 27 centimeters right so that is the kind of experiment which could be useful to you in situations. So I hope you got the point, right? So obviously what you're going to do here, you are trying to plot these values. So you'll plot these values on the independent axis. We know time is independent. You have no control over time. Once the tap is on, it is on. And what you're measuring here again and again is the height so we have height here in centimeters right so let me put centimeters you start with zero of course and then you say time is like 10 20 30 40 and so on uh, and uh, let's say these are uh, my heights in in let's say 10 uh, 20 and 30 and 40 and so on correct so uh, okay <laughs> So what you found is the first point for you was zero zero. So you place that dot here and then after 10 seconds. So let me write down the scale of the time. Also, we have seconds as 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on. Correct. So after 10 seconds, you find that the height is five. That is half of this. Is it OK? So half of this and then 20 seconds. It is 10. It is 10 and then. 35 seconds it is half of this right so it is half of this and so on so you can actually this plotting points is what is called scatter graph correct you could see a scatter graph here uh, so these are the points which you've got you see that they are lying in a straight line right so since they are lying in a straight line one thing there is a trend so what we see here we see a trend And the kind of trend we see, we call it a linear trend because they are lying in a straight line. So trend is linear. Right. Now, important thing to understand here is why did you take time here on independent axis? Because you have no control and height is dependent on time. It increases with time. You are measuring height with time. So it comes in the y axis, which represents dependent axis. Now, when we have collected the data you have seen how we organized and collected the data and we present it so this part is called presenting data right so this is how we present the data right we present the data so you presented the data now you want to interpret from this data how do we do that part so there are two things which come to our mind at this stage we have points so the question is should we join them should we join them okay we should uh, but join them by dotted lines or solid that is always a big question dotted lines or solid line okay. now for that we know time is continuous right so we say since 
time is continuous, right? Continuous. You could have fractions of time. It, it means you have to do solid line. Is it okay? This is very important when you go. For connecting the dots with lines, right? So we will take now a solid line joining these points. And this is how it comes. Okay, so it will like kind of go. Now this kind of data where all the lines are almost at the, on the line, we call this, that this trend is, is very, first it is rising, right? So, so rising means a positive trend. Is it okay? So the points on this scatter graph give you a trend and since it is rising, it gives you a positive trend. Second, we talk about correlation. Correlation is very strong. All points are on the line. Do you see that? Correlation is very strong. So interpretation will be good. I should say excellent doesn't make sense to you. So what do we want to interpret here? We want to interpret when will the height, I mean the water fill up till the top. Since the height is 27, so what we will do now here is that we'll check with the help of this line. We'll kind of extend the line, right? And 27 is very close to 30. If you have a proper graph paper, that could be 27. So at 27, we'll draw a horizontal line. So that is 27 for us, right? You can interpret that if this speed you go, then every five times you get at 40, it will be like 20. At 45, at 50, it will be 25. And at 60, it will be 30. So somewhere between 25 and 30 uh, should be the time when it fills up. Do you see that? So, so with this, so when you drop this perpendicular, I mean, this point is on the line where you can interpret that it will be time to, for the glass to get filled up. Do you get an idea, right? So I'd like you to do this on your own on very accurate graph and figure out what is this time as an estimate we know it is between 50 and 60 correct so we will find that this time is after 50 and somewhere before 60 so i'm leaving it here for you to experiment and figure out correct so you find that it's interesting to do it and in this particular part of the video what we learn is that if you have a glass like this we look for a very strong positive correlation and the way we have interpreted the data that is called extrapolation right so that is we extrapolate so we call this as extrapolation so i'm introducing you to the terms which you have come across since the point was beyond our collected values right so since the point was beyond collected values, we call it extrapolation, right? The result is however accurate since the correlation was very strong. Do you get the idea? The correlation was very strong. The results are very accurate. So let's move on with this. And now we'll work with the second and third uh, pieces which you have and then see how things change, okay? I have filled up this page, but still, we can add few more important things here. Now, let us say that you perform the same experiment with this mug, which is wider than the glass, right? And let us say that the height of the mug is, is let's keep this as, uh, as uh, let's say, 20 centimeters. Okay. So, we have a mug here whose height is 20 centimeters. And we perform the same experiment. Now, can you tell me how could you perform this experiment? Same faucet, same rate of flow, and this mug. So, obviously, what you will do is you will 
again make a similar table correct and then collect the data so let us say now we collect the data for the mug and uh, we start with zero zero so first reading will be at zero then after 10 seconds uh, what we observe here is that the height is not uh, five centimeters height is just four centimeters right so so it just fills up a bit but lesser than what was in the previous case and after every seconds it does not go up by five but goes up by four so it becomes four eight twelve and so on correct now if you draw or if you plot scatter plot on the same scale which you did earlier right which you did earlier which you have seen here what will you expect what will you expect well these points will be a bit lower than what they were earlier do you see that so what you really expect is a straight line of course at zero it is zero but in this case the graph is kind of less steep do you see that in this case less steep reason is clear because the mug is wider so it takes more time for height to increase and you get a trend once you have a scatter plot what you can do is if you put both the things together you can compare data do you see the importance of scatter plot the trend which we are talking about now in this particular case we are talking about a very strong trend and I'll take up another video where we'll just talk about scatter plots, right? So here I want to give you overall picture. <clears throat> so you can compare the trend and of course you can again interpret that at 20 what is going to be the case. And since you didn't wait that long, I mean what you have to do is you have to again extrapolate. Is that okay? You have to again extrapolate the data by extending the line by extending the line and then you somehow find the point and read the data right so so you can do this part so what how much I should say how much time does it take to get to the top which is 20 centimeters do you get an idea so this is what you do in that particular case so both these cases which we took are regarding a linear trend but always, do you expect linear trend? Let's talk about this particular case. If I fill in data, do you expect that we can connect those dots with the help of a straight line? Think about it, right? So what I will do here is move on to the next page and then we talk about. So now, Ria, I'd like you to uh, do this experiment on your own. Take a beaker or a utensil which is not cylindrical. Like right? it could be, say, something like this, right? Something like this. And let the water flow inside this using a tap, right? Let's say this is the tap. And let this flow be at a constant rate. So we're saying it's a constant rate. So initially, uh, there will be no water, but with time, this water level will rise water level will rise and what you do is you fill it almost to the top not top and then find the time or extrapolate from your information when will the utensil get filled completely so in this experiment you need to extrapolate when and the utensil will get filled. You will also interpolate when was the height of water uh, okay, so what I will do here is, let us say that the height of the water is 20, 
I mean, the utensil is 20 centimeters. So let me say that the height is 20 centimeters. And now interpolate when was the height of water 10 centimeters. Is it okay? So these are the two things uh, which you have to do from your experiment. So let me give you some values which I came up with. So what I did was that I did this experiment on my own and displayed the information on a table. So on a table, I'll take time as my independent variable in seconds and height in centimeters as dependent variable, right? So we know from here that height is dependent on time. on time and that is why I choose to put in column 1 time and in column 2 height. Every 10 seconds I collected data right so I wrote 0, 10, 20, 30 and so on at 0 the height was 0 at 10 seconds I found that the height was 6 centimeters and then it was 11 and then it was 15 so at this position I stopped so I didn't really measure these whatever correct. Now the question is, I have to figure out when was the height, let us say 20 centimeters. So I have to figure out this. Now half of 20 is 10. Uh, so, so somewhere in between is, is 10. I want to also find out when was the height 10 centimeters. I kind of just missed it, right? I know it is between 10 and 20 seconds. Now, with the help of my watch, I could not measure this time, but I have to estimate. So, so we have to make an estimate. So, we'll estimate from the scatter plot. Doesn't make sense to you, right? So, this is a very good application, and I hope now you appreciate why we are studying all this, correct? So, let me just plot the data here roughly. Uh, and then do some some values right since I know that the height is 20 maximum I am going to go up to 20 and I'm keeping height in centimeters along the y-axis and time in seconds along the x-axis since height is dependent on time perfect okay so I'll just make my rough scale 10 here and then we'll say 15 and let's say this is 5 okay so well this is not to the scale anyway uh, all these are rough sketches I hope you appreciate them and since we are measuring in units of 10 seconds each let me say 10 20 30 40 50 60 so that makes a minute right so 10 20 30 40 50 60 and so on Initially to start with it is 0 and at 10 it is 6 slightly more than this and then at 20 it is slightly more than 10 okay and then at 30 it is 15 so 30 it is 15 so what I see here is that the data which I have is not along a line right so so these are my points do you see that these are my points. Now these points, even on my rough sketch, don't seem to be on a line. Do you see, if I join a line, they're not falling. Do you see, on a line, if I join with this, kind of like this, still they're not on a line. Even if I join this, I mean these two, they're not along a line. So since they're not along a line, I figure out that we could use curve of best fit so you will notice that all the data which you cover may not lie along a straight line but we may get a strong correlation if we draw a curve which fits into the given situation right so what I did was I made a curve so I just made a curve like this joining the points and extended you see that I just extended the curve so that line which I've drawn in green is the curve of best fit and very strong correlation, right? Strong correlation. So sometimes you'll calculate this value, say R, whatever, is one, whatever. Let me just write 
well we'll not go there now we'll have separate videos on that part of correlation factor is it okay now what you need to do is figure out <clears throat> when will it fill up right so so it is just approximate i'm not saying this is when will it fill up so somewhere here you do the experiment and second when was it 10 so somewhere here so you have to find these two values once you do the experiment your values may not match mine they will not right most probably however you have an idea now how to perform such an experiment interpret data using scatter plots and i hope with this you have learned the concept how useful this could be so we'll take up many examples especially when we talk about bacteria multiplying these are the curves which are not straight lines they're exponential and these bacteria could multiply very fast similarly when you take medicine and you start feeling well within two hours that is also uh, you know, measuring temperature of your body, you'll find it exponentially comes down. And what is happening? Bacteria are dying or the, or the viral, whatever the virus was, is getting killed by the medicine. And that is also exponential decay. So those are the examples where curves of best fit will fit in the situation. I hope with this you understand the concept. Sorry for being so long, taking so much of time, but I think all comes together. Feel free to post your views, comments, and share my videos with your friends. Thank you, and all the best.